a magnetic neutral density filter. In this video, we are going to discover if this filter system is any good. Welcome to my channel. Here we talk about photography and I make videos just like this one where I talk about tools to take beautiful long exposure photography. So if you're here for the first time and you love photography like me, it might be a good idea to subscribe. Of course, for a video like this, I had to wear the Slow Your Shutter Speed T for long exposure lovers. You could have one of these just by clicking the link in the description below. store. It is always important to recognize the efforts that our sponsor does to keep alive this channel. Thanks for your support. One of the perks of having a YouTube channel is that I receive a lot of free gear, which is very, very cool. And when I receive something that I think it could be interesting for you guys, I feel I need to make a video about it. Because these kind of videos are not sponsored by the company or the brand that is sending me the gear, I thought I could call this series is this any good? And for the first episode of Is This Any Good? I'm going to review this new magnetic quick swap system by Freewell. And I'm going to compare it with the Hida 6 Top and D and the Lee Filter 6 Tops and D, the little stopper. As I did in the past, first of all, I will review the build quality. I will review my first thoughts on how the system works and, and how easy it is to use and set the filter over the lens. I will then go out and take the same shot with the three different filters. I will come back here, put everything in Lightroom and compare the results. Let's see what is inside this box and how this filter system works. In this little pouch, we receive a little lens cloth, filter cloth, a lifetime warranty, and a filter guide. Then we do have the filter. And the filter is composed of two elements. A UV filter that you will screw on your lens and the magnetic filter that will clip over. So basically you will get two filters, not only because every single filter will have its own lens cap, which is also magnetic. So far, so good. All the filters are made of a multi-coated optical glass, which is scratch proof, waterproof, dust proof, and oil proof. I told you Freewell didn't sponsor this video, but they did something very, very cool for me, which is uh, they wrote my name on every single filter. My name is engraved right here at the bottom. I think this is really cool. I never had a personalized neutral density filter. The six tops and the filter that I received has a 60 millimeters filter thread, so I will not be able to use it on my 20 millimeter lens because this has a 77 millimeter thread, but I can use it instead on my 70 to 200 millimeter lens, which also has a 67 millimeter thread. So I will just screw the UV filter and the magnetic ND filter together and then I just detach the ND filter. So the UV filter part can stay attached to your lens at all time. As you saw before, I can use this filter also on my 50 millimeter lens, which has a 58 millimeter thread. So in this case, I will need to use a step up ring. This will bring the 58 millimeter to a 67. At this point, again, 
I will uh, screw on the UV filter and the ND and then I can just detach the ND part. Now I will just need to take a photo with the three different filters, come back, bring in the images in Lightroom and compare the results. Oh, It is not the same day from the studio. I'm not in California. I am in Idal. And from here, I will take my three shots, starting with the, the new filter, the Freewell Magnetic Six Tops. I will screw the UV filter and then I can snap out the ND part. At F8, I have one over 20. The water is barely moving. I will snap on my magnetic ND filter and my shutter speed right now is 2.5 seconds. 2.5, F8, ISO 64, quick shot. Cool. So let me unscrew the free wall and quickly change system. We will go with the leaf filter right now. I will need to use a a lens adapter of 67. Here we go. I'll grab the lens adapter and of course I will grab the leaf filter little stopper, the six stops. We'll uh, put it on. F8, ISO 64, 2.5 seconds. Here we go. Change system again. We'll go with the high down now. Of course, I will need to change lens adapter and use a high down lens adapter, the 67 high down lens adapter, which I have right here. I'm trying to be quick because I don't want the light conditions to change. Here we go. I will grab my Haida filter holder and of course the six stops. Is the 10. Six stops. Here we go. Put it in. Clearly I will be using the same settings. Cool. So let's see the three results. This is the first one taken with the free wall. Second shot taken with the leaf filter. Third shot taken with the Haida. But of course, to understand a little better the results that we got from these three shots, I will uh, take these three images to Lightroom. <laughs> I am back from Idol, I am back in my studio and I'm also back in my slow your shutter speed T. I did import the three images in Lightroom. Let's have a look. First of all, have a look at this side by side comparison. These are the three raw files. As you can see on the left, we have the free wall. On the right, we have the Haida and right in the middle, we have the Lee filter image. You can clearly see that the Haida filter image is the brightest while the leaf filters is possibly the darkest of the three. The free will stands right in the middle. This difference will be even more evident if we look at the histogram of the three shots. And that's what we are going to do right now. And here we are in Lightroom. Have a look at the histogram of the first image. The image taken with the free will 
filter. You can see that uh, although we are not clipping, there is a spike on the brighter side of the image. And if we move now to the leaf filter shot, you can see that that spike on the histogram is not there anymore. But the entire histogram or the mass of the histogram is moved to the left. So towards the darker part of the image right here. And now we are on the third shot. This is the shot taken with the Haida. You can see that this, the bright spike is even more pronounced and the histogram altogether moved towards the brighter side a little more compared to the leaf filter image. So comparing these three different filters, it's interesting to notice how the intensity of the density of the three filters is different. The second factor that I like to pay attention at is uh, if there is any color cast. So let's go back to the side-by-side -side comparison. And here it is very uh, easy to notice that uh, the image in the middle has a slightly blue color cast. We did notice this even more when I compared the 10 stops from the filters to the 10 stops from Haida, I think that in the six stops, the blue color cast of the leaf filter is uh, less dominant, less important, but I can see that it's still there. And now the last part of this uh, result comparison is a side-by-side -side comparison of the final edited image. I made the same exact adjustments to the tree image, the same exact color correction with one difference. One difference only related to the image in the middle, the leaf filters. I had to change the color temperature, the white balance of the image in order to make it look like the other two. As a matter of fact, let's go into Lightroom and see how much of a change in color temperature I had to apply in order to have comparable images. So here in Lightroom, you will see on this uh, first image, the one taken with the free will, I already applied different adjustments in the basic panel, but I left the white balance as shot. Interesting difference is that the color temperature is 6100 and the tint is plus four. Remember these numbers. If I apply a auto white balance, I will go to 7300 and plus six. Let's go to the leaf filter system image. Same adjustments. I didn't touch the white balance yet. Have a look. The starting point here is 8500 and plus 15. If I apply an auto white balance, I will go at 7500 and plus 17. But as you can notice, this image at this color temperature is far more blue than the previous shot. So I had to move the temperature manually to 10,500 and uh, I decrease the tint a little bit in order to have an image that now is comparable in terms of color temperature, in terms of white balance to the previous shot. Let's go and have a look to the third shot, the one taken with the Haida. You can see that the untouched white balance gives me a temperature of 5,950 and a tint of minus four. If I go into auto, I will go to 7,200 and the tint moved to zero. I will increase the tint a little bit and this is my final shot. So looking uh, at the side-by-side -side, uh, comparison of the three shots, I would say that uh, the shot taken with the free will filter stands right in between the leaf filters and the hider, both in terms of uh, color cast and in uh, neutral density intensity. I didn't notice any difference in sharpness between the three filters. So I think the free will is using actually a good glass to make their filters. But when it comes to prices, there is a difference. The free will filter cost $99. The leaf filters cost $129 and the Haida filter that I used cost $152. Of course, in order to be able to use the leaf filters and the Haida, you will need also 
a lens adapter and a filter holder, while uh, the free wall can be just applied to your lens. You could buy a 77 or an 82 filter and then with some step-up rings for your lenses, you could adjust the same filter to the different lenses that you have. So to answer my question, is this filter any good? My answer is yes, I think it's good. Am I going to switch to free will? I don't think so. And the main reason is that I love to use a graduated neutral density filter. As a matter of fact, even in this shot, I would have liked to be able to add a GND and darken the sky a little bit. Of course, we can do this in post, but uh, most of the times I prefer to do as much as possible on the field while I'm shooting. This filter could be a very good option for someone that wants to start long exposure photography and they don't want to invest too much or they want to keep their gear at the minimum so they don't want to deal with the lens adapter and filter holders. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope if you didn't start yet that you will give it a try to long exposure photography with $99 you can get a 6 stops or a 10 stops neutral density filter and you're ready to go. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.